big turbo, much fast. While Tom struggles with a wiper blade, he's a better mechanic than he looks at minutes, but yeah, he's given up by a wiper, <laughs> defeated by a wiper blade. Yeah, so this is the RS3 TCR. So whenever we take this to track, everybody wants to go out on a passenger lap in it, and I still, or at least I didn't think it was the most exciting of cars. That was unbelievable. <laughs> but I don't want to do it again. You don't. Do I <laughs> Quite easy to drive at 90% and not very quick because it was just a standard sort of slightly tweaked Golf R engine. Just three, the 780 horsepower, but they're 330 on our dyno. So not very quick. The TT diesel in the Class A trim were tons faster than this and a lot nicer to drive. I thought look, moved about a little bit more. So last year we rented out to Brad, who I'm going to see you tomorrow, so I'm going to tell him I've said this and see if he gets upset about it. So he might get cut out, he might not. But he went banger racing in it a couple of times last year. And smashed his carbon front in and did a splitter and stuff like that. So we sort of decided this year, what can we do that means we're not having to try and find somebody to drive it, because Brad's got his own TT car now for the TT Cup. So we just said, might we try and do something a bit different? Might we do some like time attack events or something like that? A few of them clash with what we're doing, so we're going to rope probably Adam, who drove with me last year, well, the year before, 2022. We're probably roping him, him to have a drive when we can't get there. So yeah, I think we're going to do time attack. But that opens things up a little bit. We had to take all the carbon fibre stuff off, so if you see, like this door, look, I think the wrap weighs more than a good portion of the door. But yeah, we've got all this carbon fibre stuff that weighs absolutely nothing. And we weren't really allowed to run it in the club enduro and the road sports because these had to stay sort of homologated, which I think none of them were homologated anymore. You couldn't just take them to TCR UK and run them. But anyway, that were the rules, so we had to put it all back to standard, even though we put ballast in and what have you. So what? we can do now is put all this back on, not put any ballast in, and we can also tweak the engine a little bit. So everybody who we're racing against that had these definitely were tuning them because this one was the slowest in a straight line. But this is what we can do. So this is the turbo from, can't see much of it, but it looks good. We might have some better pictures of it. But this is the Garrett Powermax stage two. So this is a, G25 550, if I recall correctly, I'm probably right, probably wrong. So in theory, these are good for 550 horsepower on this engine. The engines will do probably 500 without opening them up, but let's see what we can get. We're gonna put this on, see what starts running out of steam. I think the in-tank pump on this is not the same as like a factory Golf or RS3 or S3 or whatever. So we might end up with that's restricting us. The standard intercooler is smaller on this, if you look at this. This is like a TTRS intercooler, which you need an upgrade straight away on them. So we can get a better one from Pro Alloy, which we had one, and then we've changed his mind that we want to do this since we sent that back, so we apologise for that one. Um, so we might get that one back. That includes some different charge pipes and does things a bit differently, because this goes up and down and around, where we don't need to do that if we, uh, if we do what we're doing. So yeah, so I don't know if there's anybody who's done this with the, the newest gen TCRs, putting a big turbo on it and see what they can get out of it. Definitely some people doing it and not advertising it because they're cheating, but it'd be nice to get four and a half, 500 horsepower, and then we might have to see about getting some wider front wheels and stuff like that, and make it have as much grip as the TTs have got and more power. See if we can win in time attack, but we're gonna, we're gonna go on there. Where are they? Some hiding somewhere. They've all been took off. They're behind us here, they're behind us. So we are going to run, hopefully, in the club, I think it's club class or club pro, which is no, no slick tyres, no wet tyres. We know the Yokohama tyre is the best one for wet and dry when you're racing. See what it's going to be like in the 
short sprints, I think you get like 20 minute sessions in this and you've got one lap, your fastest lap, the one that counts. So, yeah, we'll see what happens anyway. We don't want to run on slicks, we don't want to run on wets because that means we're going to mess about having all different tyres. This will run on the same tyres as all the other cars. And we want to just show people these are the best tyres anyway. Whether it means the car gets a different wrap on it or what have you, we'll see. If anybody's got any ideas for what we, we should be wrapping it, whether it's a dark side themed or what have you. I don't think we want to go for the Advan livery on this. We've done that already on the TTs and the Golf and they're still going to be running that this year. So yeah, maybe we're going to change it up a bit. We've not got anybody throwing a load of money at us this year so far. So yeah, if anybody wants to throw some money at us and get it all wrapped in there, it'll be at time attack and see. But yeah, not sure what we want to do with that just yet. I think that's a good way of using this car being a petrol to show what we can do because we can't, I don't think we could produce enough power with one of our two litre diesel engines to win in the higher, in the higher classes. But we'll see, we'll see what the lap times are like. And yeah, we'll come there.
Hello, friends. It's time to dine on a race car. Let's see what it do. Big turbo. Much fast. Let's see. So, quick one. This one on the dyno on Saturday when I weren't here. And as expected, we ran out of fuel at 380 horsepower ish, something like that. I ain't even seen graphs yet, but that's what it did. So, inside this little thing here, there's a fuel pump, which this part number's from like a really old BMW or something like that. So, as expected, it's tiny. Chop the plug off, and we've put a fuel pump from a Dodge L cap in there, which for some reason Paul had in his unit. So, anyway. Under things. And then while we're doing this, if you look at this fitting here, this is onto the high pressure pump. So that's the size of the hole at that end. And then at that end, it's that big. So it's a common thing just to run drill through that and uh, gives a bit more flow. So we'll do that, see what it does on dyno. So the RS3 is kind of done on the dyno for the minute. We're testing tomorrow morning, so we ain't got any more time. As you can see, we've made massive improvements. So orange is what it normally does on the standard turbo. So these are meant to be 350 horsepower. They never do that on our dyno. 325 is what it's normally done. And when you're driving it, it feels flat, but they've got some weird torque limiters where it's got more torque than it dips, then it gets, comes back, so you never feel at no point does it feel nice, I don't think, on the standard turbo. And it don't look like it drops off a lot here, but in reality, it feels like it drops off a lot on the track anyway. Just feels like you're revving it forever. We're on version 32 of the software now, so that's how painful these ECUs are to work with. We're at 412 horsepower, so we've got a massive chunk here. We're going to probably rev it a little bit more. We're going to rev it past 7,000, so that's the next thing. But we've got massive amounts more power where we need it as well, so we're really happy with that. We'll have to put a bit of B-roll in for it because I don't know where they are at the minute. Everybody's only just got in, I'm doing this video. But we had to swap the injectors and the plugs on the injectors because they're like the loom and just shoving. I, I don't, we'll put a picture up of what it looks like. So we've changed the port injectors because they were completely out and they're only tiny little things. Not sure where we are on the limit now. I think Tom's just not happy with how the torque management works in these. I think anybody who tunes these CMOS ECUs Put in the comments how oh, crap you think they are, because they're not good. Which will lead us on to a phone call we're having this afternoon. So we'll see how that goes before I mention it. See what gets proposed. And we might have a better solution for tuning this moving forward, rather than stabbing away and hoping that things work. There's a lot of people we race with that will be interested as well, I'm sure. So fingers crossed.